Good morning and welcome to our morning prayer service on this Sunday. It's so good to gather with you in person, in the building and also online with us as well. As we come together to worship today, um, we hope that you will find a warm welcome and that you will find uh, Jesus' presence uh, really uh, uh, tangible with you today. As we begin our service together, an encouragement if you are joining us online, uh, please do feel free to comment uh, with your prayers and also uh, interact with each other during the service. And uh, also for us here, please do feel like you are at home and welcome. Uh, we hope that some of the things that are in place to keep one another safe uh, are uh, not too uncomfortable for you. Uh, but it's just so good to be here together. So as we begin, uh, we are reminded of God's goodness with uh, these words from Nahum. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. So as we are in the building, unfortunately, we cannot um, sing our praises this morning. We'll just be listening to the song. But obviously, if you are at home and you're joining us, uh, you can obviously worship in singing where you are. That's absolutely fine. But for us here, we'll be listening to the song and worshipping, maybe with spoken words aloud, um, but in our hearts or in that way. We're going to sing at home, build your kingdom here, and listen to here, build your kingdom here.
Lord God, we thank you that you are at work. And as we join together this morning to give thanks for your goodness, to listen to your word, to be filled afresh, we pray that you would build your kingdom here in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And we come now to a time of reflection, of confession, and we remember that the night has passed. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We come now to worship God with a psalm. The psalms are the hymn book of the Bible, and uh, we're going to say the psalm together. Uh, it's going to be Psalm 23, so if you're at home and you have your Bible and you'd like to say it with us or follow it with us, you can. Here the words will appear on the screen or you can look at them on your own Bible or your phone instead. And we say together, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to our reading, and uh, Zania, if you can come and share that with us. The reading is taken from uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, verse 1 to 11. Um, and we read. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pain on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you brothers are not in the darkness, so that, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night, nor to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who, who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breast, breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, 
encourage one another and build according to the grace of our, our God. Sorry. Therefore, encourage one another and build accordingly to the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Tania. So this morning, we're focusing particularly on verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one, an one another up just as in fact you are doing. And as we begin to look at this, let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for the gift of your word in the Bible, which we celebrate especially on this Bible Sunday. Lord Jesus, as we wait for your return, help us to learn from you and grow in your likeness. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh and empower us to build one another up for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this letter was sent as an encouragement to Paul, ironically, considering he's saying to them about building each other up and encouraging one another. He's doing that in a letter where he's doing that, which is maybe kind of confusing perhaps, but also quite apt that he's leading by example. Now, if we just get a brief understanding of the kind of letter that he's writing, it's a letter where he had been to this place in Thessalonica and he had been seeking to tell people with others about God and his good news. And it had not been easy to do this. Um, it was a place like many others that was ruled by the Roman Empire and they'd faced a lot of difficulty and opposition when they were there every time they were speaking about Jesus, particularly speaking about him as king. Uh, for many, it was like this is an affront to Caesar, because obviously he was seen as a much uh, bigger person that they should be obeying uh, than perhaps a Jesus that they didn't know. They weren't actually able to stay especially long as they would have done normally. They ended up having to leave earlier than they would have liked. So Paul was really concerned that the Christians there would have been really new, feeling perhaps quite lonely, and feeling like opposition was all around them. And he was really worried. So he sent Timothy to check how they are. I'm wondering if he sent Timothy partly to teach him, but partly perhaps he worried about his reception if he was to go back there. Um, and actually, much to their joy, the church had remained faithful, even in the difficult times. And this is then the letter that Paul sends to them and encourages them. Now we might hear encourage one another and we might think, oh, that's, you know, that's quite an inward thing. Um, but actually it's not just something to benefit the church. It's actually a positive outworking of where Jesus says for us to love one another. And we need to hear and receive good news too. Um, but also that it would be a witness to other people where we talked about before Jesus had said, love one another as I have loved you, that way people will know that you are my disciples. So there's a witness in this as well. And obviously there are ways other than speaking where we can build each other up, um, but I'm gonna focus particularly on words today in that way. And I think one of the reasons that the Bible is as wonderful as it is, um, is because it's God's word, word speaking into real life. Um, it's a whole library of different books. It isn't a blueprint just for a situation. It's a living and active word. And actually, God uses it in different ways to speak into the situations that we're facing. And not just the joys, but the difficulties too. And that's much of what we see in the Bible, is people going through difficulties and God speaking into their situation, or simply just being there with them. And that being an encouragement and a building up to them. And this is what we're seeing in this letter from Paul to this church. And I love the fact that we, like the rest of the Bible, it's it's into a real situation, a difficult situation. And it doesn't 
kind of gloss over it or pretend it isn't there. Paul acknowledges the darkness, but it is anchored in Jesus with hope shining, even if it only feels like it's in the distance. The picture that came to mind for me was, I, I don't know if you've ever been up that early, I generally am not, unless I have to be because of a child, um, but if you've ever been up early enough to see the sun just peaking, not sunrise where it's really bright, but that bit just before the dawn where you can just see light peaking in the distance, it's mostly dark, but you can just see the light coming. That's what came to mind when I read about this, build each other up and encourage one another. Because often, I think in this situation, in the Bible, this letter, and for some of our difficult situations, it feels like there's more dark than light. And actually, this letter, um, and much of the Bible I find, acknowledges the darkness that's there. It doesn't gloss over it, it doesn't pretend it isn't there. But there is still that dawn that is peaking and is the hope that is coming and is there. And I think that is part of how we can learn to build one another up. This letter kind of gives us a little bit of a lesson on ways that we might do that in our words. Because Paul acknowledges the situation. He says, we don't know when Jesus will return. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. He says, the culture around us will say that nothing is wrong and that everything is fine. Peace and safety or peace and security was the Roman Empire slogan to placate people. And it's a battle. We need to be alert and sober, putting on God's armour, which protects, uh, particularly in these verses, picks out the really vulnerable bits of us. If you think about our hearts and our head, um, it picks out those particularly. He doesn't skip out the difficulties and he actually addresses them directly. And again, it isn't just, oh, it will be fine, just put this armour on, oh, it will be fine. It's acknowledging the reality that is more difficult. He doesn't just give a highlights reel. I don't know about you, but when someone is encouraging to me or builds me up in their words, it feels much more real and has much more weight to it when it's grounded in reality. When they don't just give a platitude or gloss things over. Um, when, when they really listen to what I'm saying. And that is really hard to do, isn't it? If, if we're honest, I find that really hard to do. Because I don't want people to be unhappy. I, I'd really like to encourage them and then just be, all right, all, all, all of a sudden I'll just say something and they'll be okay. We, we don't like to sit in that bit before <laughs> they feel encouraged. That's tough for us. And actually, if someone gives us platitudes or someone, sometimes I've seen it in these memes that you see on social media, some of them are okay and some of them are quite funny or encouraging, but some of them it's just a bit like, oh, it'll be fine almost like a sticking plaster for some of these situations. It can sound nice sometimes. We feel like we're doing the right thing. And we just go, oh, don't worry, it'll be fine. And it rolls off the tongue. I think I found myself doing it even this morning, if I'm honest. But they don't mean much on their own. They're quite limited, aren't they? They don't really encourage you deeply. Um, and I wonder if when we say things like, don't worry, or it could be worse, or you get over it, or you still have, whatever it is. It's not that they're bad in and of themselves. We're obviously just trying to help, but I just wonder if there's something better. If there's something that God is trying to encourage us to grow in, which is deep encouragement and building up that comes from him that we learn in him, that really gets to the root of an issue for somebody. It's not a magic wand still, don't, don't get me wrong, but it makes a difference in a different kind of way. I don't know if any of you guys have received encouragement like that, where it can just feel like dawn breaking in your life, light coming into a dark situation. What we see with Paul is that he not only acknowledges the situation, he then speaks of God's truth. 
And again, not in a sticking plaster kind of way, but in a way that speaks into that situation particularly. So in the verses, he calls them, sincerely calls them brothers and sisters. And he's not just saying it because it sounds nice, he's saying it because he means it. And it's a reminder to them that the reality is we're part of God's family. And it's a reminder that you're cared for, isn't it? So even that is quite a simple thing. Um, but what we miss sometimes is how we address others. And um, perhaps we can address them with God's truth. You might feel a bit strange calling someone brother or sister, but maybe see how it works. Um, maybe think about other ways we can address people in a kind way in those situations that brings out who God is. In speaking about darkness and light, he's reminding them who they belong to. Again, it's not a, well, it'll all be fine, but it's reminding them of God's presence with them. And that is deeply encouraging, isn't it? It doesn't make everything go away, but it's deeply encouraging. He says, we do not belong to the night or to the darkness. And saying we, not you do not belong to the night or the darkness, saying we says we're in it together. You're not on your own. And actually that's a lot of what we want to hear when we're struggling, isn't it? We want to be encouraged to know we're not on our own, that someone else is with us. And not just that, Jesus is the light of the world and he's with you. So we are together and God is with us. He also gives them a way of going into the situation. Not, oh, well, you just do this and it'll all be fine. But to say, actually, let's be awake, let's be alert to what's happening. We can put on the armour of God. His love and hope of salvation is an encouragement. Paul reminds them of the good news of Jesus. He gives them, reminds them of their purpose. He's not giving them the purpose. Jesus has done that. But he's reminding them there is purpose. And actually we need that, don't we? Often in our difficult times to be reminded that we have a purpose, that we can contribute. Because often what we end up feeling is that we're not very good or that we're not helpful or that why are we here? And actually he's reminding them our purpose is to receive salvation and to live together with God in life or death. And then he says, therefore, after all that, <laughs> after all that, then he says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up as you are doing. It comes from the truth of who they are in God and who God is that he says that. And again, it's more positives than negatives. Because often what we do is we hold on to the negatives. Even if someone's being kind and saying, oh, hang on, you've got something in your teeth. Um, we hang on to the negatives more than we hang on to the positives. And actually, this is full of God's truth and encouragement to them. Not his own good ideas, not like what he's got going on in him, but what he's seen elsewhere in God's word and how God is revealing himself in that time, in his presence. And I wonder if that's often where we struggle, is we think, I've got to fix that person. I've got to think of something encouraging to say. Um, oh, why can't I think of anything? Instead of saying, Lord, what do you want to say to them? What would you like me to do in this situation? And often perhaps he'll pop something in our minds, a Bible verse of encouragement, Maybe he won't put anything in our minds. Maybe it's our job to sit and be with someone at that time. But I wonder if that's where we go wrong often. I know that's where I go wrong often. I think, oh, I need to make this better. Instead of remembering God is the one who is building up and encouraging. And so I believe God is in wanting to say to us today to build each other up and encourage one another. But to be grounded in his truth and in his presence, to be grounded in who we are in him with one another. And this is his way of teaching us, I think. 
Now, for that to be the case, one of the things perhaps we need to think about is how, how much value we're putting on the Bible and how much value we put on being in God's presence and, and asking for him to fill us. Obviously, God is with us all the time. But there's a difference between being with someone and acknowledging someone and speaking to them, isn't there? And I wonder if God is wanting to remind us there are times of being with God where we might ask, okay, I'm going to read my Bible now, Lord. Please show me what you would like to show me. Please teach me and rely on him to help us learn. Other times, perhaps just to be in God's presence and to say, Lord, I'm here. I just want to be still and be in your presence and let him lead in how he wants to minister in that time. It reminded me of something that John Wimber said. You may have heard it, you may not have done. Only Bible and we dry up. Only spirit and we blow up. But word and spirit, we grow up. Only Bible and we dry up. Only spirit and we blow up. But word and spirit, we grow up. And I wonder if in this building up and encouraging at a deeper level, which we've seen in the Bible today and we've thought about for ourselves, whether it comes from a place of spiritual maturity. Not that we can't do it if we're not spiritually mature, because we're all on that journey. Um, but do we value the place of both God's word and God's spirit in our lives? And I wonder if that's what he wants us to take away today. Not, not to go away and think of clever one-liners to encourage people so that we're ready, but to, grow, to, to go away with the sense of, I want to grow deeper in God so he can prepare me for those situations. And so I remember to rely on him in those situations. Because in order for Bible verses to come to mind, it helps if we've read a bit, <laughs> um, in, in order for him to speak through some of those Bible verses and for it to go deep into our hearts and our minds and change our hearts and, and produce fruit like we've been talking about, then that means spending time. Now you might think, oh, don't give me another thing to do. <laughs> this, is, this is a hard time. I, I'm not talking about hours and hours and hours, although if you want to do that and you feel that's what God's leading you to, then go for it. But it's how much we value it. Are we going to put it as even five minutes in our day that we say, this is what I want to value, God's spirit and God's word in my life. And like I've said, it could be as simple as remembering to ask for God's help and remembering he's with us when we read the Bible. It's not us just trying to work it out. Oh my gosh, what does that mean? Ask God, please, Holy Spirit, would you show me what this means? Would you be with me at this time? And then spending some time allowing God perhaps to show us in a time of reflection, you know, how we might live that out. And there are times to do that on your own, but there's times to do that with others. So I really encourage you, if, if you're feeling like, oh, I need other people at this time, even if you're feeling like you're not, and to come and be with others if you can. That could be over the phone. That could be you've got friends who are reading the Bible too, and you say, right, we're going to encourage one another. Um, maybe we're going to phone each other, uh, as we do normally, however often that is, and we're going to chat about how things have been going reading the Bible, and um, just chat things through and pray for one another doesn't have to be an hour-long conversation but just a place of encouragement it could be that you're joining us online for evening prayer encourage you to do that on Mondays particularly we spend time doing what I've just said being in God's presence and reflecting on his word um, and just giving space for that and there's also time on the fellowship and worship on zoom if you'd like to be part of that, that's another way you can do it. And we're happy to set up more worship and fellowship groups if you would like to come along to them. And that day and time that's on the newsletter isn't so helpful. But if you contact us, we can obviously speak about that. However we go forward from today, 
uh, thinking about how we'll value God's word and his spirit, let's be those who seek to grow deeper in him, to encourage others deeply. And I just want to finish with the verses we heard, but with the message translation. And um, I hope that we can listen to it for us, because I feel like God is really wanting to encourage us today as well, to encourage others to be encouraged ourselves. And so please do, if you want to close your eyes or you want to hold out your hands or just, you know, however you want to receive the word, please do listen to it and receive it as what God wants to say to us this morning. I don't think, friends, that I need to deal with the question of when this is all going to happen. You know as well as I that the day of the Master's coming can't be posted on our calendars. He won't call ahead and make an appointment any more than a burglar would. About the time everyone's walking around complacently congratulating each other, we've sure got it made, now we can take it easy, suddenly everything will fall apart. It's going to come as suddenly and inescapably as birth pangs to a pregnant woman. But friends, you are not in the dark. So how can you be taken off guard by any of this? You are sons of light, daughters of day. We live under wide open skies and know where we stand. So let's not sleepwalk through life like those others. Let's keep our eyes open and be smart. People sleep at night and get drunk at night, but not us. Since we are creatures of day, let's act like it. Walk out into the daylight sober, dressed up in faith, love and the hope of salvation. God di didn't set up for us an angry rejection, but salvation by our master Jesus Christ. He died for us, a death that triggered life, whether we're awake with the living or asleep with the dead, we are alive in him. So speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so that you'll all be together in this. No one left out. No one left behind. I know you're already doing this. Just keep doing it. Amen. At this time, you may want to pray in the comments if you're online, but if you're here, please do pray in your own way as you're led. I'm going to lead us through praying for the world and for one another. And in this time, please do speak out your own prayers in your heart or aloud where you are. Father God, we pray you would inspire and lead those who hold authority in this and every nation of the world. Guide them in the ways of justice and peace. And I encourage you to bring your own prayers for news that you've seen about countries or just places and situations around the world that you want to lift to the Lord. We especially think of Nigeria this time. We pray for peace, Lord, for justice. for the places in the UK where they're in the higher tiers and are struggling to get on top of this COVID, COVID virus.
And we do pray for Yemen and Syria also. We pray for peace, for wisdom for those who are making diplomatic decisions. And pray for Honduras and Beirut. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us and those who have responsibility and leadership instruments of your peace, and let your glory be over all the earth. Lord, grant that every member of the church may humbly and truly serve you, that the life of Jesus may be revealed in us. Strengthen all who minister in Christ's name. Give them courage to proclaim your gospel. Make us alive to the needs of our community. Help us to share each other's joys and burdens and help us to grow deeply in your word and spirit that we may encourage and build one another up. We bring our prayers now to God for those who are unwell or grieving. And again, feel free to name in your heart or aloud those who you wish to live before God. We particularly pray for those who are in hospital at this time suffering with the virus. Pray you would strengthen the doctors and nurses that would care for them. Thank you for all those who make hospitals run, whether it be from cleaning to finance to making food. Deepen our compassion for all who suffer from sickness, grief or trouble. In your presence may they find their strength. We remember those who have died. Father, into your hands we commend them. We praise you for all the saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. And we join our prayers together with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we draw our time together to a close, uh, we do hope that if you are particularly touched by anything we've been speaking about today, or you've really been finding God um, speaking to you particularly recently, or you would like to explore faith further, or even would just like some support at this time, please do speak to myself or Sarah on sides if you're in the building. Online you can private message us on YouTube or Facebook or use the contact details. We would love to hear from you. As part of our worship to God, we give an offertory. If you're online and you would like to know more about that, then um, please do scroll on Facebook. Later on I'll put the description in. Um, about how you might do that. Uh, if you're here, uh, there is the offertory plate at the back and the card reader if you would like to use it. In terms of our notices, it's our AGM today at three o'clock. 
So if you um, are on the electoral roll and I have your email, I've emailed you the link <laughs> along with the minutes from last year. Um, so if you're coming on Zoom, then obviously we'll see you later. But if you um, are not sure whether you've told me your email address, maybe just check with me and uh, I can send you that Zoom link if you need it. Other than that, if you're planning to be here in person, then please do bring your little AGM report booklets if you were sent them or you can look at them on your phone. Um, unfortunately, I've only, I'm only able to print a certain amount um, so I've printed just the minutes rather than everything else that have been sent because we're going to take the reports as read already. So if you haven't read the reports and you want to come to the meeting, please read them before you come because we won't be going through them in every detail um, by reading them aloud or anything like that. We'll be talking about them. Also, if you are wanting to join in with our pause and pray, um, we've been putting up prayers and pictures on the railings um, once a month recently to encourage others, but also as a way of us praying for our community and seeking to bless them. And so the theme this month is remembrance. So if you'd like to write a prayer around remembrance or draw a picture, that's not just the kids, adults can do that as well. Um, please do send them to me, WhatsApp them to me, or even post them through my letterbox. As long as they're A4, I can laminate them and put them up. Um, but if you have littler ones and you want them to do colouring, then there's some on Facebook. Um, or you can ask Ellie or myself to forward an email to you. Other than that, we will be here for Remembrance on the 8th. Um, and we will have a Remembrance service. So please do feel free to join us online or in person. Uh, but if you are online and you can or you're at home, um, if we are joining in with others who are encouraging you to stand on your doorstep at 11 a.m. Um, to do the two minute silence there. Obviously we'll do it in church, but if you're at home, then that's a way you can remember, a bit like we did for Clap for Carers, but with silence. So, as we finish our time together, hopefully we'll see you at three o'clock for AGM, if you are gonna do that but we're going to finish by worshipping God with our final hymn, which is You Are My Vision. And again, we won't be singing our worship, but perhaps speaking out our praise or just reflecting with the Lord together.
you, Lord, that you provide us with purpose and vision and that you encourage us and build us up that we might encourage and build up others. Lord, would you help us as we go into this week to value your word and your spirit and to grow deeper into maturity with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us in person and online. It's been so good to worship with you today and to pray with you. And we finish with God's blessing. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.